Tuesday radio show this week. We're on the mix on Tuesdays. Welcome back. Big broadcast. Rolling. Rolling. We're rolling down the road. Rolling down the river, as they say. Getting ready to go into the second hour of our big broadcast. But uh, 51 minutes after the hour, thanks for joining us. Here on the mix on Tuesdays, and uh, Jay Bird Wells is going to join us back here in just a few moments. We are going to get a hold of Stacy Arusso. Oh, Stacy Arusso. Oh, Stacy Arusso is going to join us. Why has Johnny Kim made an appearance? I don't know. We like to talk to Johnny Kim every once in a while. He's a big deal. He's a big star. I love Johnny Kim. He I do not like a me very much. Oh, actually, he does. He, uh, him and I buried the hatchet fairly recently. If you're a regular listener to this broadcast and whatever incarnation it has been, um, we buried the hatchet fairly recently. So, we are going to go get Stacy Arusso. The fantastic Stacy Russo is going to join us here in a few moments. I believe there is Stacy. How are you? It's James Love from iHeartRadio giving you a call for your radio interview. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Pretty good, actually. We've got uh, Stacy Russo uh, joining us here on Skype Audio, and uh, we are going to go uh, grab our co host here real quick, uh, Jaybird Wells. She is going to join us as well to uh, chat with Stacy today here on our big broadcast. And um, uh, while, while we're waiting on Jay to connect with us, go over to uh, JiggyJaguar.com, the all new JiggyJaguar.com, and uh, uh, download our app. It is available over there as well. And you can uh, find us on social media and uh, do all that stuff. Over there at JiggyJaguar.com. And um, our last guest for uh, for this hour is uh, Stacy Russo. And she uh, joins us here on the aforementioned Skype audio. And um, Stacy has a very, very interesting story. She has a, a great book. And uh, let's tell you a little bit about this book. It is absolutely amazing. It is a brand new book. It explores the influential Southern California punk rock scene of the 1970s and the 1980s through interviews with women who lived it. It is called We Were Going to Change the World and it's by Stacy Russo and uh, forward by my Watt, and uh, it is a brand new book. It explores the influential, as I mentioned, Southern California punk rock scene. Uh, this punk rock scene of the 1970s and the 80s uh, is widely recognized as one of the most vibrant and creative periods in rock and roll over the years. Many books have come out exploring this explosive time in music and culture, but none have exclusively exclusively focused on the vitality and the uh, influence of women who played such a crucial role in the incredibly dynamic movement. And Stacey Russo is the author. She has created a unique book about the punk rock era, focusing on the women who were such a huge part of it. We are we're going to change the world. Interviews with women from the 70s and 80s, Southern California punk rock scene. And um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about why you decided to write this book. Yeah, so thank you so much for your support. And I can tell your enthusiasm for the book. That's yes. awesome. Yes. So I'm a librarian and a professor at Santa Ana College in Santa Ana, California. But in the 1980s, I was a punk rock girl. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> It, had, it has greatly influenced the rest of my life. So I can definitely say, you know, how I am as an educator, um, what I call even my daily activism of what I do, you know, throughout the day in terms of how I treat people or definitely try to treat people the best, how I'm open to people who are different from me, how I embrace a do-it-yourself philosophy in so much of my life. And um, just so many other ways the punk rock scene influenced me. So I decided several years ago, I want to interview other women like me who are now in their 40s, 50s, 60s, or older, who were involved in the scene in different ways, and ask them, you know, why did you get involved? How were you involved? And did it end up influencing your life in any way? And that's pretty much how the project started. And the result is this book that includes interviews with 37 of the women. 
Fantastic. It is Stacy Russo. <laughs> She's with us today. We were going to change the world is the topic. Also, the uh, the great book. Um, before we uh, before we get into it here uh, too much further, um, what's your website, social media? Um, how, how, do, how do we find you? And, uh, and, and as Jay Bird Wells likes to do to our guests from time to time, stalk you on social media. <laughs> I'm actually very easy to find on social media, just under my name, Stacy Russo. And it is my personal page, but anyone who's interested in my work is welcome to send me a friend request, of course. I'm also easy to find through the college website, um, the Santa Ana College Library website. And anyone who has questions about my book or wants to communicate with me can always email me. So I'm very, very accessible. and. Um, one thing that I like to always tell people when I'm talking about my project, because it was very much a do-it-yourself project. You know, I went and met most of the women in their homes. I had two little recorders that I took with me and um, worked on it, you know, myself. And I want to let people know that if this project inspires them and they just want to talk with someone about how to do a project like this, I'm completely accessible to talk with anybody. Fantastic. Sounds like my sister from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, oral history is such a great way to document, um, you know, a cultural movement, something in history. It could be a group of people who witnessed an important event. It could be people who live in a certain neighborhood or all work in the same job. I mean, there's so many things you can do by interviewing people and compiling the interviews and getting these stories out there that you feel are important. So it, that's why I always want people to know, if this inspires you, contact me and I can talk with you about what you want to do <laughs> help you get started. How, how do you spell your last name? It's R-U-S-S-O. And my first name is S T A C Y, so it does not have an E. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered about that. Stacy Russo with us today. We were going to change the world. She joins us today here on a big broadcast, and um, this this incredible book it is uh, it it is absolutely amazing. Stacy has created basically a unique perspective here, in addition uh, to many of the musicians and different people that were in, involved in the uh, in the scene back then. Um, Stacy has interviews with fans, um, scenesters who added so much color and energy to the music scene. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the different folks that you interviewed uh, for this great book. Yeah, definitely. So one thing that also makes this book different than a lot of other books about music or you know cultural movement is that I really tried to include people who were involved in a lot of different ways. So punk rock definitely has music you know, at the center of it, but there's so much more when there's a scene like that. So it's the music, but it's also writing and photography and art. And then the audience is also incredibly important. So there wasn't as much of a boundary you know, between the performers and the audience. Everybody was there, and it was a shared energy. So in the book, I do include women who were involved in all those different ways, such as um, women who created fanzines, which are small self-published magazines. And I did one of those with my friends back then called Anti-Establishment. <laughs> um, also women who were photographers, definitely musicians, um, women who were writers and journalists. And then a lot of the interviews are women who were fans. So their stories are um, actually take up a large percentage of the book. And what I have found is that people really respond to that. And I think that also shows how important it is to not only focus on the more well-known and famous people, but also get what you might consider you know, the everyday people. Um, these are not regular women, but I think you understand what I mean. Because I've had women come up to me and say, thank you so much for including regular women in your book. And I'm like, well, these women you know, are not your average woman. <laughs> but I know that they're saying that because they see themselves in those stories. So there are a lot of those stories, but then there are women who maybe 
known to people even outside of the punk rock scene, like Exine Cervanka, the singer from X. Another very influential woman in the book is Alice Bag, also a musician. Someone named Kira, who played bass for Black Flag. Also, um, Jennifer Finch, who played bass for L7. So there are these women like that. There's also a very influential performance artist named Johanna Wendt. So it's um, a collection of all these different stories, and it shows how the you know these women were involved in different ways in punk rock. Couple questions for you, Miss Russo. Uh, <laughs> one. Sure. Did you have to change anybody's name to protect their identity? And two, I'm trying to wrap my head around, how did you organize the interviews? <laughs> yeah. Um, so in regards to the names, um, and actually the interviews in general and how I approach that, the women on the release form were able to put down how they wanted their name to appear when the book is published. So. There may be, a, I know at least one, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head right now, who doesn't have her last name in there. Um, but I believe that all the women do have their, their real name. <laughs> so they want it to go with that. Um, in regards to the interviews, after I interviewed each woman, I sent her her interview. So at that time, she could decide if she wanted to edit anything, add anything, remove anything. I wanted them to feel comfortable with their interviews so that when it was published, they felt like it was definitely their story. So I tried to remove my voice as much as possible. That's why when you read the interviews, it's not in a question-answer format. It's as if someone's just talking to you in the first person, and it's fairly raw, and they're telling you their story. So. I would start out by asking them a little bit about their early life and how they got involved in punk rock and how they were involved. So all the women answered similar questions. But then based on those answers or how they were involved, there would be, of course, different questions I would ask them. And then all they really did was try to shape it in a, a linear format. So as you're reading the interviews, because you know when we talk, we jump all around in different time periods of our life and all that. So I had to rework some of it to make sure when you're reading it, it makes sense because it's not you're not in the conversation, <laughs> you know. So, but um, that was really about all was just um, making sure they were accessible and readable, and the women were happy with their interviews. Is each interview a different chapter or different scene? Mm, yes. How does that play? Yeah, so these are all great questions. So yeah, it's um, different from some other oral history books that have been published mm -hmm. that do more of a sort of a, a cut-up method where they might organize chapters by subjects or themes and um, take you know little excerpts from different people's interviews to make that chapter, um, which is great. It's another way to definitely do it. But this is really... Um, each chapter is a unique woman's story. So you're with each woman for those length of pages for her chapter. So it's organized like that. And then they're organized in the book alphabetically. I didn't want the women grouped. I wanted, um, and I didn't want some of the women who are definitely more well known to somehow get more of a presence. So that's why they're grouped alphabetically by their first name. So one chapter you might be reading is someone like Xene, you know, from X. The next one might be a woman who was a fan. So that's pretty much how they're organized. Sounds like everything was pretty well thought out and, and edited. I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> I mean, it was... Um, it probably, you know, it's a published book now, so it appears that way. But I'm, I'm sure, as you know, working on a project, it can feel pretty crazy when you're really in the thick of it. <laughs> oh, and, yes. Um, yeah, and, you know, dealing with, you know, 37 women and making sure I hear back from them, keeping track of, of all of it. Um, of course, I have a very busy job as a professor at a college, so... I had to do all this in the evenings and weekends, so um, it was um, pretty crazy there. But ultimately, um, and I am since I'm a librarian, maybe I tend to um, do fairly well with organizing things. <laughs> <laughs> so that probably helped. <laughs> did 
do you uh, foresee yourself doing another writing project or? I do, yeah. So actually this is, um, We Were Going to Change the World is my third book. And my next book that's coming out later this year is a book about activism. So I do mention my roots in punk rock within that book, but it's a different type of book. Um, the title is Love Activism, but it also includes 10 interviews. So it's not an entirely oral history or you know a book like this one, but it does include interviews with 10 people who are doing amazing work in their communities to you know, help others and to make the world better. And um, I'm just now starting the next, next project, which is going to be much more like the punk rock book, but it's going to be a collection of interviews with activists. Um, probably just throughout the country who are doing different kinds of work. I really um, have discovered how much I love bringing people's stories to an audience and how powerful that is and how meaningful that is. So that's, um, my writing has definitely gone in that direction. <laughs> Two parts of my question. Uh, one, for, for my sci-fi, I had a young adult librarian give me a review that was included with the book. And then I've got reviews that's not included with the book. Can you give me one in one quote for your your book that was included, and then one quote that is after it's published? Sure. Um, so one quote from one of the interviews, for example. Well, no. The, the, do you have a, a a quote that came with the book? Did you have somebody read the book before it was published, and then did, was it included with the book? Um, no, I don't. I don't believe so. the The title of the book, though, comes from a longer quote, so I don't okay. know if you're thinking of that. But so go for and it. And that actually kind of helps to explain the title. And this quote comes from Exene, and it's: "We thought we were going to change the world." I thought we were going to revolutionize the way men and women reacted with each other in politics, art, culture, and music. Um, that quote's really helpful because some people wonder, you know, why isn't it called We Changed the World? Why is it we were going to change the world? And I think that the title is best as we were going to change the world because you could easily argue that in some context, perhaps punk rock has changed things, like musically with self-expression and dress, you know, and fashion and all that. But with politics or or gender issues, I don't really think you could say we changed the world. So that that quote kind of helps explain that title. I feel. And then in regards to other quotes. Um, there are a good number of reviews on the book. I don't have them in front of me, though, but I know that a bunch of them are listed on Amazon. The book has, I'm very, I have much gratitude that the book has received a lot of attention. So it has been reviewed in a lot of different places, and I know the publisher has listed some of those reviews, quotes from those reviews on Amazon and also on the Santa Monica Press website, I believe. Though that answered both of my questions. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is Stacy Russo. She's with us today. We were going to change the world is the topic. And uh, Jay Birdwell's with us today, our best selling author friend. And uh, also, as uh, many of the folks in the podcasting space have referred to her as a loudmouth witty broad. Um, yes. She is, <laughs> she, is, she, is, she is with us today as well. And, uh, and, and, and Jay, this, th this book sounds like something that uh, is right up your alley, my friend. Yeah, I'm, I just. As a reader myself, because authors should be readers, I am very intrigued with the organization and how you pulled it off. And, and I have this huge thing about people watching. So uh, that's yeah. pretty much all down my, my alley. So I look forward <laughs> to looking for it. Right. I mean, part of the organization and, and how I did it too, which might also answer that question you asked me earlier, I first just created a flyer, which is very much like punk rock. <laughs> And um, it just mentioned the project, you know, what I was trying to do. And, it, and I basically asked women to contact me if they were interested in participating. So I posted the flyer, 
physically around some places in Los Angeles and Orange County here in Southern California. And then I also posted the flyer in social media on Facebook and different groups. And I thought I'd have to maybe take out ads to find women in something like the LA Weekly, but it turned out that it was shared so much. I'm glad I didn't do that because women started contacting me and they wanted to participate. So that's how I found most of the women who are in the book. And then about a third of the women I contacted directly because I already knew of them and I reached out to them and asked if they would be a part of it. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I, I went physically and met most of the women in their homes. And one thing that I wasn't anticipating was how emotional the project was going to be for me and how much I loved these women. Like almost instantly, I just felt like these, this woman's great, you know, when I was interviewing them. And I've actually now have new friends from the project. <laughs> So many of the women, because they still live around here, of course, only a few I had to do over the phone because they don't live in this area. Um, we've now had dinner together. We've had coffee together. They've come to my home. So I was not anticipating that as well, that I would get these new friends out of doing this project. <laughs> it happens. And I mean, like authors 30, 40 years ago were like uh, put on pedestals where readers didn't sit there or, or people that you research with didn't communicate with. And it seems like in this day and age, social media has made it to where we're required to like, I don't know, be a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, really that's one thing about punk rock is the idea that there are no idols, you know. So I would really hope that no one, even my students in the classroom, you know, think that I'm somehow better or, you know, I'm not reachable. I would want people to always feel, no matter what, that they can reach out to me and, and I'm here, you know. So, um, I honestly admit I've been racking my brain this whole time thinking that your voice sounded familiar. And I might have contacted your library like five years ago to do research for my book. So... I don't oh, know. my gosh. That is so, so fascinating. <laughs> I don't know if that, I mean, because you said Orange County, right? Yes. I'm at Santa Ana College, which is, um, you know, about 30 miles or so from downtown L.A. Yeah, I, I bugged Orange County and a couple other counties over there. The <laughs> yeah, so maybe we talked on the phone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would be funny. But the description of you that I just heard um, does make it sound like this book is, is definitely right up your alley. <laughs> Probably. You, you have no idea. I'm, just, I'm an iceberg, and this is just the tip. <laughs> We've got uh, Stacy Russo with us today. She joins us live. She has got a fantastic, fantastic book out there. And... Um, before we let you go, my friend, because I know our time's limited here with you, um, how do we get a hold of you online, pick up your book, social media, all that? Cool. Yeah, so the, the book is very accessible. So it's um, accessible to purchase through places like you know Barnes & Noble online or Amazon. It's also in many bookstores, so I would highly recommend if there's an independent bookstore near you that you contact them to see if the book is there. I know in California it was at Barnes & Noble when it first came out. I imagine it's still there and also at a lot of independent bookstores. And, um, and then again, you can easily find me through the Santa Ana College website, through the library. Um, you can contact me that way. You can find me on Facebook. If you just search for Stacy Russo, um, my last name, R-U-S-S-O, I'm very easy to find that way. And um, any questions about the book or anything, I'm here to talk to anybody who'd like to talk to me. Good stuff. Well, uh, before we let you go, Jay, do you have any more questions for, uh, for Stacy before we let her go for today? Um. I, I really want to know how this idea came about. I mean, was was it wanting to, like, put a closure to the past? No. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier was, 
several years ago I went to a workshop by an organization called Voice of Witness, and they're in San Francisco. And they have a workshop every summer for educators. I think it's now open for anyone to go to it. And it's all about how to do an oral history project. So I went to that workshop because I've always loved you know, memoir, autobiography, you know, personal mm -hmm. narratives and all that. So I went to that workshop and I didn't have this project in mind, but through the course of that week, this um, idea came to me and it was really because of growing up in the punk rock scene myself that I wanted to contact other women who are now older like me who were part of the scene in the 70s and 80s and ask them about their involvement. So it was a very personal project. So it definitely wasn't about closure in any way because I still see this, even though I don't look punk rock, I don't listen to punk rock every day, <laughs> I still see punk rock as definitely a, a big part of my life, you know, as a root and a foundation of who I am as a person. So it was really to give voice to women who are part of the scene. Um, many times, there are women's voices in books like this, but they're usually a small percentage, if at all, in there. This book changes that and gives them full representation because the book is only women's voices. So that kind of gets to you know why I wanted to do it, you know, initially. Well, it is Sweet. a it is a fabulous book. Uh, you've been a, a terrific guest, and uh, I appreciate you being with us. And uh, Jay, thanks for joining us uh, today on our on our program as well. And uh, I will uh, I will talk to you next week, Jay. And uh, then Stacy, we will be in touch, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Thank have a good you one. so much, and I hope you both have a beautiful day. Definitely. It's been fun. There goes Jay Bird Wells and Stacy Russo on Skype, and mm -hmm. uh, we are going to take a brief timeout. Uh, hour number two is officially uh, 